You're listening to Family Talk, the radio broadcasting division of the James Dobson Family Institute. I am that James Dobson, and I'm so pleased that you've joined us today. Welcome to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, thanking you for making us a part of your day. Now, on today's program, you're going to hear a sobering but enlightening presentation from our guest speaker, who is also a very good friend of our ministry. He is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, a highly decorated American freedom fighter and culture warrior. Jerry currently serves as the Executive Vice President of the Family Research Council in Washington, D.C., and was one of the original members of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. His presentation, which we are about to listen to, is also included in this year's broadcast collection, by the way. Now, Family Talk is only possible because of you. It's because of your prayers and generosity that we are able to maintain our time on the air here. And Just for the month of December, thanks to some very special friends of the ministry, there is a matching grant in place here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. So if you'd like to make a financial contribution and have your gift doubled, simply visit our website at drjamesdobson.org. That's drjamesdobson.org. Or you can give a gift over the phone when you call 877-732-6825. That's 877-732-6825. From all of us here at the JDFI, thank you for your prayers and for your generosity. It was 82 years ago today that the attack on Pearl Harbor took place. As you may recall, this surprise attack by Japan killed thousands of Americans. Then on the following day, the U.S. declared war on Japan, which ultimately turned the tide of World War II. You may remember these very famous words from President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. How sobering that time was for our nation. Now, as you're about to hear, Jerry Boykin discusses the decline of today's military due to so-called woke agendas. Sadly, the young men and women who do enlist in the military are sometimes lost from the indoctrination that they receive as soon as they begin their service. Here now is Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin with a powerful presentation on today's edition of Family Talk. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Please. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's an honor for me to be here tonight with uh, the Dobsons. And at probably the darkest period of my life, he did something for me that uh, made a huge difference. And I'll be eternally grateful. In 2003, I got in a lot of trouble. I was the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, and I got in a lot of trouble in the Pentagon, and the media came after me. Some of you may remember it. I was this guy that was speaking at churches in his uniform and all and around the country, and I mean, they beat me up. My wife, my little green-eyed wife, got on the phone, and she called Dr. Dobson's office. And believe it or not, he got on the phone with her and he said, what can I do to help? And she, she didn't really know, she just wanted him to help us. She called Gary Bauer too and asked for his help and he did the same thing. Dr. Dobson, the next day on a radio program, he aired this thing saying, this is who General Boykin is. And, and he went through the whole hour. He, I don't know how he got all the information that quickly, but at the end he said, if you wanna help General Boykin, he said, you call one of these two numbers or both of them. One of them is at the Pentagon and one of them is at the White House. Well, the one at the White House was Donald Rumsfeld's private number. <laughs> they tied up the line. They called me in and said, would you call that man and tell him to stop this? And I said, no, I won't call him and tell him to stop it. But first of all, he can't stop this now. We've created a storm here, and for probably five days, an entire work week, Rumsfeld could not use his personal line going out of the Pentagon. (laughs) So thank you very much, and thanks for inviting me to be here with you tonight. 
What is the uh, number one responsibility of the President of the United States? It's to defend the nation, defend the people. How many of you feel secure today? Dr. Dobson asked me probably back in February to talk about what's going on in the Pentagon. And I'm going to do that and I'm going to, I'm going to try to tell you in a very unfiltered way exactly what's happening today to our military based on the policies and the actions that are taking place in the Pentagon today. And today our military is in a steep decline. And I want to show you why. And I don't think it'll come as any surprise to you as to what's happening to our military today, but, but you may not understand exactly why it's happening. So let me jump right into it. The focus on winning wars has been overridden by this woke theology or ideology and the LGBTQ agenda. In the Pentagon, those are the two most powerful agendas in the Pentagon today. You think the FBI's got problems? Don't think for one minute that the Pentagon doesn't have problems because what they're doing is instead of raising up a powerful army, they're helping the demise of our military today. Our warfighting capabilities are greatly degraded. Nevertheless, the mission of the military remains constant. It is to win the nation's wars. Most of you are old enough to recognize General Douglas MacArthur. In 1962, Douglas MacArthur stood in the mess hall at West Point, and he delivered a famous speech. In fact, when you watch the movie MacArthur, it is probably one of the most moving things in that whole movie about the life of MacArthur. He was talking about the mission of the Army. Remains determined, fixed, inviolable. It is to win our wars. That hasn't changed. The imperative for our military to win our wars has not changed. But the agenda within that military has clearly changed. What's caused all this? Why are we in this terrible situation? One is the Marxist movement in America. It seeks to reduce our military capabilities. You say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, if you're a globalist, if you're a Marxist, it makes all the sense in the world. These forced mandates for the COVID vaccine allowing transgender individuals to serve in the military. How long did it take Joe Biden to reverse the decision that Donald Trump had made to bar transgenders from the military? How long did it take? One or two days is all it took for him to reverse Trump's decision not to allow the transgenders to serve in the military. We're wasting training time in this woke classroom indoctrination of young recruits. You know, we have to be ready to deploy and fight and win the nation's wars in, in a very short time period. And for every minute that we spend sitting in a classroom looking at this woke theology, this woke ideology, this woke nonsense, we're wasting time that we should be out on the range shooting the weapons or doing maneuvers or doing something that actually contributes to winning the nation's wars. Instead, we're taking these people into a classroom and making them sit through this nonsense. If you're in the National Guard or the Reserves and you only get one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer and you're wasting your time doing that and that's exactly what's happening, they're wasting their time doing this you're not going to be ready to win the nation's wars. And allowing women to serve in the frontline combat units. This all started back with Barack Obama. That's where all of this, everything I'm showing you here started with him. And then we had a reprieve when Donald Trump came in and he began to turn things around. He, he gave the Pentagon some very specific instructions in terms of what he expected, what he wanted. And he wanted an army, a Navy, an Air Force, a Marine Corps, a Coast Guard that could win the nation's wars. And then Mr. Biden comes in and we're right back to where we started. Allowing women to serve in the front line is not a good idea and I can give you all the reasons for it. It's not a good idea. Selecting senior military leaders, and this is one of the things that really, 
really bothers me is we're selecting these military leaders, senior leaders, like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, and, and others, the Chief of Staff of the Army, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, Chief of Naval Operations. We're, check, we're selecting them based on their woke beliefs or their liberal politics instead of their proven record of leadership in combat. They're willing to support the president's agenda. That's why they're there. That's what, why they bring them in. Reducing the standards for almost everything, almost everything in the military today, the standards have been reduced to allow for more people to be able to come in, particularly those people that are in one of these special categories. They're a transgender or it's a female trying to get into the infantry. So the enlistment standards have been reduced. The enlistment standards have have been rock solid for as long as I can remember, and now we've reduced those enlistment standards. Basic training standards have been reduced. Combat arms training, jump school, ranger school, special forces, all of that, the standards for all of those have been reduced. All you have to do is talk to the instructors that are out there teaching in these schools, and they will tell you the standards have been grossly reduced to the point that they come away wondering if we'll ever be able to take on a sophisticated and serious enemy in persecution of Christians. And don't think for a moment there is not a persecution of Christians. These Christians are being persecuted uh, every day in our military. And you know what that's doing? That is discouraging so many moms and dads all across the country to support Johnny or Janie going into the military. I have people ask me, Everywhere I go, I travel all over the country. People will say, well, I don't want my son or daughter to go in the military and have to check their faith at the door. And I must tell you, I'm getting to the point where it's very hard for me to look a mom or a dad in the eye and say, no, you need to encourage them to go. Because it's not the military I was in. When one of my grandchildren asked me about it, I'm not sure at this point what I'm going to say, to be honest with you. After 36 years in the military. I want you to look at this, and some of you may be aware of this, but I doubt if you're aware of all of this. The Marxist indoctrination embodies critical race theory. That's, you know, they have admitted that they're Marxists, right? You've seen Patrice Cullors uh, admit that they are Marxists, they're Marxist trained. Well, here's some of the tenets of CRT. And by the way, why is this important? It's important because we're forcing this on our military today. The Pentagon has a, a directive that this will be taught. You say, well, I thought they quit. No, they haven't quit it. They're still doing it. And this is being forced on every young man and woman that comes in our military today. And here's some of the tenets of it. First of all, it, it starts with a premise that racism or white supremacy exists everywhere. In every situation, organization, school, legal system, or every human relationship. Secondly, it demands that one should not ask whether there is, is or isn't racism in a situation, but how the racism manifests itself. There's an assumption there's racism in everything, every organization, every person. CRT demands that every person bow to its ideology and become activist who must tear down everything around them through making accusations of racism and constantly changing the definition of words, for example, racism and privilege. How many of you know who this is? You know, this guy's a former Navy SEAL. He's a member of Congress. He got that patch in combat. Listen to what he has to say. Today, I'm gonna to begin sharing some of the more than 400 credible reports that we've received on the troubling cultural issues impacting our military. Make no mistake about it, the military is still the strongest in the world. But wokeism, identity politics, critical race theory, and blatant political activism have indeed seeped into this critical institution. Many of these issues involved mandated instruction on critical race theory, instances of preferential treatment, violations of free speech, and a decline in focus on merit-based advancement. And we want to have a reasonable discussion over these issues so we can keep these problems from compounding.
Because DOD has some of the weakest whistleblower protections across the entire federal government, we will only share the details necessary while preserving confidentiality. Here's the first one. It involves a case of something called privilege walks. And yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. This is training that was required of members of an Air Force squadron, including senior leadership, designed to separate members physically regardless of rank or merit or commendations. This is how the training went. Commands were given. If you are white, take a step forward. If you are male, take a step forward, and so on, through every possible point of privilege one might have according to their intersectional hierarchy. The training was designed to physically separate people and more or less demean and diminish the success of those with privilege. But they didn't get where they are based on their own merit, which is indeed a funny thing to do in the military because that's exactly what happens. You get to where you are because of your merit. So let's just point out the obvious. This is meant to shame people and shame people for something they have no control over. It also literally creates manufactured divisions in an environment that requires camaraderie and puts down certain service members over others, not on merit, but on skin color or gender. And when did it ever become the mission of the military to force service members to confront their so-called privilege? What value does this provide? We're all individuals. You are not the sum of your identity groups. This is complete nonsense and it has no place in our military. We cannot let the armed forces become some sort of massive social justice experiment, which is clearly what some want. This is just one example of hundreds. We're going to keep exposing this because there are too many senior officers in the military that are pushing for this. So stay tuned for more examples and the kind of woke training our service members are receiving in today's military, how it's hurting morale and how it's hurting our readiness. Now, just so you know, he and uh, Senator Tom Cotton have been running a uh a hotline for whistleblowers within the military. And, uh, and they're getting a lot of information uh, from that, and people are calling in and, uh, and informing them of what's going on in the military. So they're staying pretty much abreast. But th stop and think about this. You bring people in to do a critical race theory session, and you put one group over here and you say, you are the oppressors, and you put another group over here and you say, you're the oppressed, how is that building unity? And I have said a number of times in, in the national news media, if you want to understand why the Ukrainians are whipping the Russians right now, it's two things. And those two things are the equalizers on the battlefield. One is purpose. The other is unity. Those people have a purpose. They're fighting for their lives. They're fighting for their nation, but they're also unified. They're unified. It doesn't matter what squabbles they may have had before this situation occurred with the Russians. They're fighting because they're unified. They're winning because they're unified. And all we're doing with this critical race theory is we are dividing our people. And we don't need that because it is so important to the success on the battlefield. Now, how about West Point? West Point hosted a seminar titled Understanding Whiteness and White Rage, led by Carol Anderson, who wrote a book entitled White Rage. If you had a son or a daughter at West Point, wouldn't you just be delighted that they, this is what they're spending their time learning? Wouldn't it just, just really make you feel good and secure if this is what they were teaching them at West Point? Indoctrination at West Point, it was reported to Judicial Watch that West Point was offering a three-credit course called The Politics of Race, Gender, and Sexuality. Does that make sense to anybody in here? The course description states it will focus on feminist theory, critical race theory, and queer theology. And by the way, that's not a pejorative word anymore, queer theology. That is the word that is used by the LGBT community now. Finally, the class will consider how the contemporary issues that relate to race, gender, and sexuality apply to the Army and how they impact the Army officer. CRT advances its cause by creating offices promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and it's a major organization. Here's, here's what they look like. These are offices now that we're hiring 
civilians and we're putting some officer in charge of these offices in every installation now, every organization now has one of these, Army Equity and Inclusion Agency, Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Office of Diversity, Inclusion and Equal Opportunity. And these are all over our military today. Today's military diversity does not apply only to race. It also applies to sexual and gender preferences. President Biden issued an order, an executive order 14004, allowing transgenders to serve in the Army. And as I said, that probably was within the 48 hours after he took over that he, he uh, lifted that ban on transgenders. But you know what? In case you don't realize it, you're paying for their surgery. You're paying for their hormone therapy. Taxpayers are paying for that. But, you know, it gets worse. It's not just that we're paying for it. It is also that they get the first 18 to 24 months that they're in the military to go through the surgery and recover, do their rehab before they're even deployable. So we're bringing people in that we're going to pay for their surgery and their hormones and then give them 24 months to go through this. And if you want to know what it's costing over a 10 year period, $3.7 billion. And we did the math on this at Family Research Council and figured this out and passed it over to the Pentagon and said, do you really want to do this? Well, it made a difference when President Trump was there. Of course, as soon as he left, uh, nobody paid any attention to this. 3.7 billion. You know what we could do with 3.7 billion? With our troops that are under-equipped now that they've had 20 years in Afghanistan? You know what we could do with 3.7 billion? It would help a lot. We're, we're wasting our time and our money. But more importantly, we're wasting the time of those young men and women that are going to have to fight the nation's wars with this kind of nonsense. This is what's happening in our Pentagon today. The teaching us not to be men is, is a statement that one of the West Pointers that has been through all of this came out with this statement. He said, they're teaching us how not to be men. Department of Defense Education, I guess most of you realize that the Department of Defense actually has its own school system, a public school system, most of the time for K through, uh, through 12th grade. They've got uh, 160 schools serving 69,000 children and military personnel, and uh, they've got a budget of $3.2 billion. Now, this is the children of our warriors that are putting their lives on the line, they're in these school systems in many places, particularly overseas, uh, in Europe or Asia, any of those places overseas, they have to go to school here because they don't have other schools for them. They're now peddling the CRT, white shaming and left-wing activism to the pupils K through uh, 12. You've been listening to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, and that was retired United States Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. This concludes part one of his dynamic presentation. Make sure you're with us again tomorrow for part two, which will be the conclusion of this talk. You will not want to miss it. Now, if you missed any part of today's program, or if there's a part you'd like to go back and revisit once again, all you have to do is go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash family talk, and you can hear it again. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash family talk. The program you heard today is included in our 2023 broadcast collection here at Family Talk. So if you enjoy our Family Talk programming, you will definitely want to add this year's broadcast collection to your home library. We'll be happy to send it to you as our way of thanking you for your gift of any amount in support of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute today. So to get your own copy of this five CD set or to get a digital download of the 2023 broadcast collection. Simply visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash 2023. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash 2023. Everything you need will be right there on that landing page.
And finally, before we go, I want to remind you that throughout the month of December, thanks to some very special friends of our ministry, we have a matching gift in place. That means if you make a financial gift to the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute today or anytime this month, that gift will instantly be doubled. That's twice the impact. You can give a gift online at drjamesdobson.org. That's drjamesdobson.org. And thanks for remembering that Family Talk and the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute are completely listener supported. We do appreciate your prayers and your financial contributions. I'm Roger Marsh, and from all of us here at the JDFI, thanks for making us a part of your day. God's richest blessings to you and your family. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.